The future of work is not here to replace the human touch with technology, rather to simplify processes and bring employees to the core. The future of high-tech, high-touch workplaces is embedded in the present. The future of work is now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Next Tech Southeast Asia HR Summit 2021. We have now come towards the end of a very eventful day, which is full of valuable learning for every one of us. Today, organizations worldwide are standing at the intersection of technology and people. The rapid adoption of technology and unprecedented changes in the digital sphere have become overwhelming for employees. Organizations are looking for a deeper understanding of the needs and expectations of their workforce and are placing greater emphasis on employee experience and well being solutions. Since incorporating well being solutions into workplaces has been shown to improve morale, satisfaction, workplace culture, and job performance, there is tremendous value in having healthy and satisfied employees. In today's last session, we'll discuss the initiatives that can be taken to improve the lives of employees who are struggling to sustain a perfect work-life balance. The new era of work has brought the importance of upskilling and learning and development into the limelight. We'll delve into some of the employee-centric learning and development strategies that could give them a competitive edge in the post-pandemic world. And now, it's my great pleasure to invite our speaker for this session, Rosalind Ku, founder and CEO at CXA Group, Singapore. Rosalind invested $5 million of her savings and borrowed another $5 million to build her startup CXA after five years of trying to convince her firm to invest in Asia. CXA won Incitec of the Year and Rosalind won Women Leader of the Year from the Asia Insurance Industry Awards. Rosalind supervised PNG factory lines in Iowa and then worked on Wall Street. She launched two dot-com startups before moving to insurance. Rosalind also grew Mercer and Marsh Benefits 14 APAC countries, 800% in eight years. She graduated from UCLA Cybernetics and Columbia Business School. So without any further delay, let me hand over the frame to Rosalind. Over to you. What I'm gonna talk about today is well-being at work which is to me the core of high touch and high tech workplaces. If you look at the way employee health and benefits run today, there are so many pain points for both companies as well as their employees. For companies, they're really worried about the double digit increase in healthcare costs. And that's due to their workforce aging as well as chronic disease. And with COVID and all of the lockdowns, everyone in the workplace is much more conscious, not only of their health, but of mental health. When firms try to work on wellness programs to help improve their employee health, they actually don't have the ROI data to see if it's working or not. In addition to this, companies are hearing from their employees that they don't want one size fit all benefits, that they really do want to personalize to themselves. Also what we're finding in Asia is a lot of employees have duplicated insurance coverage. So if they're married, to someone who's also working and they're covering for the entire family, you actually can't submit your hospital receipt to two different insurance companies. So it's wasted money. And then anyone who's ever submitted a hospital receipt will know how paper-based and how long it takes to get reimbursed. If you look at the value chain for employee benefits, you actually understand why there are so many pain points. Every company and employee has a very fragmented value chain. So if an employee can't get their hospital claim receipt reimbursed, they're going to the company HR. What does the HR do? First, they talk to the broker then they find out, no, it's the insurer, but the insurer tells us it's the panel network and that's completely fragmented. 
And now during COVID, there's a lot of people who won't enter a clinic. So they also have to connect the teledoc, the televideo consultation, or the e-pharmacy. And then if a company actually pays for health screening and some wellness benefits, that is also fragmented and also disparate. And companies don't have the data for any of this. But what if we use the platform to actually connect every single one of these players, not just the medical providers, but also all the wellness providers. And if we can digitize the insurance end to end and capture the data, then employers would start to be able to focus on the right interventions. Now, why is this important? When I was running Mercer and Marsh, I actually had a very large Chinese client and they bought cancer insurance for their employees. But you know what? They discover that there were too many late stage cancers. It was really too late. And what they asked was this, since they're already paying for health screenings for every single employee, why couldn't someone connect the health screening and do the early detection before it's too late? But not just the health screening, but also connect all of the players that could actually help someone prevent the disease or a care plan to treat the disease and also have the insurance and the treatment. Why can't someone build an employee health ecosystem that connects all of these different parts? So if you connect all of these different parts and if you actually use a company funded wallet and allow your employees to personalize, then we could start tailoring. Now, what goes into the wallet? So companies are already paying for group insurance for employees. Companies are also paying for employees to go to see general practitioners, specialists. Also, they reimburse when you have to go to the hospital or to the dentist, they're paying for health screening. And some employers also pay for opticians as well as wellness spend. And some employers will actually allow employees to sell some of their annual leave, especially during COVID because none of us can travel. So if you can sell five days of annual leave and put money into your wallet, then employees can decide how much do I really need for insurance if my spouse is already covering the whole family? Or if you're in Singapore, 70% of Singaporeans have integrated shield, which also duplicates your group insurance spend. So if you have duplicated benefits and you can pick the lowest basic plan, use your spouse's plan, and redeploy that money into maternity because it's not paid for by most plans or pediatrics or more insurance or getting a health checkup early and managing your diabetes or your obesity, you know, or your smoking cessation and getting healthier, then that's what people really want. So if you can actually opt down to the lowest insurance plan if you already have that coverage, either through your personal insurance or through your spouse's insurance, put more money into your wallet, then you can actually shift excess insurance and treatment money into early detection 
prevention and wellness services. And so we use technology to connect the mental health, the healthy nutrition, the smoking cessation, the yoga, Pilates, meditation, the massages, and also travel and learning in order for employees to tailor their benefits to their own needs so that we wouldn't come into a situation where in the old Chinese company I worked for, it's too late. So if you can shift from treatment to prevention using exactly the same money, then we could do a lot more during the pandemic. As part of that, we help employers measure the lifestyle risk in their firms. So we ask each employee, are you a smoker? Do you exercise at all or do you just sit all day? Do you even do a health screening and know your risk? Are you eating junk food or healthy foods? Do you drink alcohol? No one ever tells us the truth on the alcohol question, but how is your sleep? Are you sleeping at least seven hours a day? And especially during COVID, are you stressed? Are you feeling socially isolated? And the way we gamify it is that we ask them to take a picture of their face and we age their face according to their lifestyle habits. So we show you what you look like if you continue these habits. And what we've learned is this only works for women. It hasn't worked for men because all the men think even if they look at their age face that they're still so handsome. You know, so we just think men are delusional and women do care about vanity. In addition to that, we help firms link up the health screening and load the health screening record and digitize all the biomarkers and let employees actually get that data because this is their own data. And with their own data, we actually link them to tell a doctor. So these could be specialists depending on what their health is it could be mental health, could be GPs, it could be specialists. And we also link them to e-pharmacies for their care plan. And especially because of all the lockdowns, um, a lot of people are not walking to a clinic unless it's a real emergency. But for simple things, we found a surge in teleconsultation for mental health and physical health and delivery of the medication to their homes or to work. And not only that, we added, because we work with a population health company, different care plans and different options. So we added them to the ecosystem to actually help people through these issues. In addition to that, a lot of the employers we worked with told us that their employees were getting very wary of just seeing each other on Zoom and not meeting in the office as often because with all of these lockdowns, you know, every few months you, you can have another lockdown where you don't see each other for months again. So, and, and, HR didn't have a chance to pass wearable devices because everyone's spread out everywhere in the country, outside of the country. So we built a corporate step challenge using the pedometer on the phone, Android or iPhone, to track steps, see where they are on the leaderboard. And if you win, if your team wins, you get more dollars in your wallet. So we're using the wallet to drive healthier behavior. Not only that, we added an ability for each employee to upload pictures of themselves exercising, meditating, 
um, running, having family time, and to comment on each other's pictures. So here is my daughter when she told me she had COVID, right? And, and, and so what we found was this was a great way to incentivize people with a wallet and with colleagues to do team building and also to exercise at the same time. And if every team was captained by the, the heads of the department, so HR competing against finance, against sales, against operations, against the call center, and if your boss is the leader and there's peer pressure on all the members to keep up the race so that you can win and, and beat the other group, we found that there was huge, huge amounts of engagement. What, what we also found was there were a lot of pictures, not of healthy foods, but like junk food, high calorie foods. Asians take a lot of pictures of their foods. I can tell you that. And so what we do is that we take all this data, the lifestyle data, the step count, the checkup data, the claims consultation and drug data, the, the phone with your steps, your age and your gender and also your, your life event, you know, are you a family with kids? Are you young and single? Are you pre-retirement? And personalize the recommendation. Because what you're worried about is not the healthy people. Healthy people are always already healthy. They're incentivized to always be healthy. They're spending a lot on being healthy. You're really incentivizing those who are unhealthy and sedentary and come up, help them come up with goals, read articles about mental health, physical health, um, come up with a care plan, ways to get healthier. And if they need additional insurance for their family, especially if they're leaving the company, they may not have insurance between jobs, extra insurance. So what we try to do is personalize health according to each person person it could, because it's not one size fit all. And so for HR, if you think about this data, they never get personal data, but they get aggregated anonymized data. And so they can segment those who are healthy, those with lifestyle risk, but not yet unhealthy, which is probably the bulk and those who are already unhealthy with chronic disease they can actually use the app to recommend something tailored to each person and have group activities. So diabetes management, obesity management, mental health, smoking cessation, all kinds of focus interventions because everyone is different. So it actually helps the firms focus the right interventions to the right people. And so we do believe that with technology and having high engagement for high touch, that the world of physical, financial, and mental health can all be unified onto one app, which actually helps each firm use their current insurance spend and outpatient spend, but that can actually pay for their employees to do prevention and look at themselves and look at getting healthier physically, financially, and mentally. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rosalind, for this incredible insight. I really admire how you curated your thoughts on employee well-being in the high-tech, high-touch world of work. Your thoughts on company-funded wallet that enables employee personalization would prove to be really significant in today's world of work. Shifting excess insurance and treatment spent into wellness, measuring lifestyle risk, 
health screening with teleconsultation, personalized recommendations based on health data would really cater to the overall well-being of the employees. Concluding session, I would like to thank Rosalind for joining us here today. It's been a great pleasure. I would also like to thank everyone for joining us. Do stay tuned for a closing note by Yasmin Taj, editor of ETHR World International, and an exciting magic performance towards the end of the day.